Hi, and welcome to a new book review with Trish Renee. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll get notified when a new book review is posted. As always, my book reviews are spoiler free. Today, I will be discussing Lost Places by speculative author Sarah Pinsker, a favorite author of mine. Lost Places is a collection of short stories that Sarah had published in various anthologies over the years, as well as one new story at the very end of the book. I'll give a brief overview and review of each one of the stories. There are 12 in total. The first is titled Two Truths and a Why. This story is about a woman who helps her high school friend dig through his older brother's house of crap after he dies. The brother was a hoarder, so there's a lot of stuff for them to sift through. While cleaning, the woman finds old VHS tapes of a show called The Uncle Bob Show, which was a creepy slash weird version of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, if you remember that. All of a sudden, she remembers being in the audience as a child, but she can't find any history of the show online. Um, I didn't really get the ending of this story, I'll be honest, but overall I enjoyed it. It was interesting and held my interest, and I thought it was one of the better stories in this collection. The second story was titled, That Our Flag Was Still There. It's about an alternate future where our government has replaced cloth and paper flags with actual humans who act or stand in as the flag. It's an honor to be selected to become a flag and serve your country. This was a unique story and it kept my interest the entire time. There are themes of social justice and Big Brother in this story, which I also recommend um, if you pick up this book. So the first two stories, yes. The third story is I frequently hear music in the very heart of noise. It's about a New York hotel, well, a made up hotel, where various artists, including the painter Georgia O'Keeffe, the Fitzgeralds and the Gershwins gather to listen to music. This wasn't a favorite story of mine. There were way too many names to keep track of. And personally, I felt like the story lacked cohesion. It seemed to jump all over the place and I couldn't really focus, but that's okay. The fourth story is The Court Magician. It focuses on a magician who was offered the chance to make any person's problems disappear, but it comes with a cost. Someone or something important to the magician like a person's memories is taken, like their memories is taken away with each problem that is erased. This was a favorable story. It was short, sweet, recommend court magician. The fifth story is called everything is closed today. It's about a mysterious threat that rocks through the United States and everything gets shut down. This reminded me of the recent lockdown. So I didn't particularly enjoy this story. A woman named May can no longer work at the library, so to pass the time, she starts teaching a group of teens how to skateboard. Um, the ending of this story was a little bit of a letdown, I'll be honest. Uh, so give it a try. It was at least interesting to read. The sixth story is titled Left the Century to be Unmoved, about a pond in a town that sometimes takes people who jump into it and no one knows what happens to the person because their body is never found. This was a kind of creepy, short and easy to follow story. Recommend. The seventh story is Escape from Caring Seasons. It's about a senior assisted living facility with technological advancements. Um, and in the story, the, it won't release its patients. So one of the elderly women escapes to get help for her wife and is aided by a drone. This was one of the faster, probably the fastest paced story in the whole collection, and I enjoyed it, so recommend. The eighth story is titled A Better Way of Saying, about a boy living in the silent movie area who wants to be a writer. He gets the opportunity to interview Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford, two silent movie stars. Honestly, I didn't get the point of the story. Um, it's one I pass on. The ninth story is Remember This For Me. It's about a woman artist in her 80s who believes the reason she has problem with remembering things is because a muse with a capital M takes the memories from her. This was a good story that touches on subjects of aging and dementia, so recommend. The 10th story is The Mountains, His Crown. 
about a town of farmers and their technology greedy emperor who wants them to grow specific crops to maintain his portrait in their land, despite the fact those crops may not thrive in certain areas. This had a satisfying ending, so give it a try. The 11th story is where oak and hearts do gather. I skimmed this story that's about a song um, and presented in online forum messages. It was hard to follow and I honestly didn't really care about finding out the origin of the song, so pass on the 11th story. And the last story is Science Facts. This is her new story about a group of female campers that take an unexpected detour into a strange forest. This was the longest of all 12 stories. It was not my favorite, but the ending was cool and creepy. So if you're into that, recommend. Overall though, I would recommend Sarah Pinsker's Lost Places, especially if you enjoy speculative short stories. Also check out her other book, We Are Satellites. Very good. Make sure to hit subscribe and let me know in the comments if you enjoy reading or writing short stories, or if you've read any Sarah Pinsker books. I'd love to connect with fellow science fiction and fantasy fans. Until next time.